Hello and welcome to another episode of Rainy Day Brain. I'm Ken and thanks for joining me for this second week of our experiment together of working through the book known as The Happiness Trap. So in this next section, which is about vicious cycles, he's trying to demonstrate how our usual coping mechanisms are kind of useless when it comes to dealing with our thoughts and our feelings, at least when it comes to dealing with thoughts and feelings that are extremely intense that go beyond just the normal everyday worries that most people have and deal with. So there's a worksheet and I've placed the, the link below to the complete set of worksheets so if you want to follow along it asks you to go through some different questions and answer them as honestly as you can. Uh, so he asks you to write down thoughts you would most like to get rid of. Uh, for me, it's uh, the constant worry about what I'm going to do with my life as I get older. Then he asks you what feelings uh, you would most like to be rid of. And for me, that would be guilt about not being further along and having an actual career and making you know good money so that I can provide better for Karina and myself. And then he asks what sensation you would most like to get rid of. And for me, I guess it would be the seemingly ever-present sensation that I am not using my available time well, no matter how I try to map it out or schedule it. Uh, I always feel like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing or not doing enough of the things that I need to do, etc., etc. So time management's a biggie for me. It then asks you what memories you'd most like to get rid of, and there are way too many for me to go into. <laughs> so just, I'm going to answer that, many. And then he asks you to make a note of the types of control strategies that you attempt to use to deal with those various categories of thoughts, feelings, that kind of thing. You've got worrying, dwelling on the past, uh, fantasizing about the future, imagining so-called escape scenarios where you're thinking about leaving your job or moving to a new town or, or something like that or maybe leaving your partner and finding a different partner? Uh, do you spend time imagining revenge scenarios for, you know, getting back at those who have wronged you in some way? Do you imagine suicide scenarios? Uh, do you spend a lot of time thinking it's not fair or thinking if only? X, Y, and Z had happened. Do you spend time blaming yourself or blaming others? Now, I, I feel that with the blaming others thing, I've finally gotten past that. I realize that it's basically my own bad decisions that have gotten me where I am today. Uh, he asks you to think about if you spend a lot of time blaming the world, and again, I, I mostly don't do this, although I do find myself really envying the educational system of other countries where it... Uh, it costs a lot less to go to university and pick up some more advanced skills. Living in the U.S., it's very expensive to get any kind of an education. Uh, he asks you to think about if you spend a lot of time talking logically to yourself as a way to talk yourself out of your bad feelings, and I am very guilty of trying to logic my way out of bad feelings. He asks you to think about if you spend a lot of time thinking uh, or talking positively to yourself uh, or even talking negatively to yourself. And I do the negative self-talk thing a lot. I'm trying not to, but I still do it quite a bit. Uh, analyzing other people, trying to guess their motivations, especially in a situation where someone has done something to you that has resulted in you being hurt mentally, physically, financially, if you spend a lot of time thinking, why, how could they do that, right? Once you've done that, once you've gone through that whole worksheet and you've listed things for each item, he wants you to think about that even more and say, okay, all these different control strategies that you've tried to help manage these negative emotions, negative self-talk, did any of them actually get rid of those painful thoughts long term? Did any of your control strategies bring you closer to a rich, full, and meaningful life long term? And if the answer to question number two is no, then 
what did this cost you in terms of time, energy, money, health, uh, relationships? Uh, how much wasted time did you put into trying to control your emotions, your feelings uh, with control strategies that didn't actually give you any long-term results? Now, my favorite thing is to use distraction and self-bullying to try to manage all of my negative thoughts and all the negative feelings that go along with them. Now, as the author points out, using any of these different coping mechanisms uh, is fine, with the exception of the self-bullying. That's never fine. You should never do that. But any of those control strategies, using them in moderation is fine, and for most of us do that effectively for little day-to-day -day things that come up, right? Not for the, the big, overwhelming, emotional, existential crises that uh, people like myself and people with uh, other people with depressive personalities and anxiety disorders um, do. Uh, but then if you start using those control strategies uh, to try to handle the more serious uh, depression and anxiety issues you have and they don't work but you keep trying to force those to work for you you're just wasting your time and, and not doing yourself any favors now one of my favorite examples from this particular chapter is how he likens uh, emotions and grief to an inflatable ball that you have in, in a pool and as long as you press down on that ball you can hold it under the water, but you have to be constantly pressing it down because the moment you take your hands away, it pops right back up to the surface. And so if you view your grief and your emotions and your sadness and your bad feelings, and you view that as, you know, the ball and then your ineffective coping mechanisms as, you know, just kind of holding them under the water, uh, but as soon as you take those coping mechanisms away, as soon as you can't distract yourself uh, from the problem, or as soon as you stop talking positively to yourself, everything just kind of bubbles back up. In a nutshell, the more intense our feelings are about something, the less effective most of our control strategies are going to be with dealing with those intense feelings and emotions in a positive way that will have a long-term effect. Uh, there are the worksheets that he includes uh, as well where you track everything, your thoughts and feelings, the ones that keep popping up over and over again for a week, and then try to make note of what control strategies you use to deal with those thoughts and feelings over the course of a week. All of this is just to get you to a place where you see what the problems are that you want to deal with and you see how your coping mechanisms to date haven't served you well because you're still here, <laughs> still having the same problems. So that's it for this episode. I really do appreciate you sticking with me and doing this. So as always, if you have any questions, go ahead and send them to me, Ken at don'tpunishpain.com. And I'll see you again next week. So we'll have another lesson, I guess. But uh, this has been fun. I, I look forward to these, uh, these videos a lot. So thanks again. Until next time, I'm Ken. You take care and be good to yourself.